Hello and welcome to the Modern Dandy. Today I want to talk to you about ballroom dance, and more specifically, is ballroom dance right for you? But first, what is ballroom dance? Ballroom dance is a sport in which you dance with a partner through a set of steps. It's not at all like what you see on television, so if you're coming in expecting it to be like Dancing with the Stars or some other show, you should probably throw that out the window. Now, in dance, there is almost always a male leader and a female follower. This is done for simplicity's sake, so when you're at a dance, you aren't running around asking people if they lead or follow. There is a lot of standard dances that come in ballroom dance that you would expect, such as waltz, tango, and foxtrot, but there's other different kinds of dances that you may not have known are part of that category, such as swing, or rumba, or salsa, or two-step. These all fall under the ballroom dance category. There is three typical kinds of dances that you'll find. There's social dancing, there's competitive dancing, and there's showcases. In social dancing, really all you do is just meet with people, dance, maybe have a few drinks, and have a good time. In competitive dancing, you dance with a partner and you are scored by a judge. And in showcases, which is like what you see on television shows, you go through a preset routine, which is not like any of the other kinds of dancing, especially not social dancing, and you do tricks and stunts in front of an audience. Now, really, with ballroom dance, all you need to dance are just dance shoes. I'll get to that in a minute. And any other clothes you might need for the occasion. And really, dancing is done at several different places. It's done at dance halls and studios, but it's also done at special events. So keep an eye out for those if you decide to do ballroom dancing. Right, so there are some, several pros of ballroom dance that you may want to consider when you're thinking about doing ballroom dance. One thing is that it's a social event. You get to go out, meet people, you may even meet a lifelong friend, but if not, you still got to go and socialize with people in a group event, and that's something we all really do crave deep down. Another thing is it's not as expensive. Really, all you need to ballroom dance is a good pair of dance shoes. And yes, there is an important distinction between dance shoes and regular shoes. Dance shoes have a suede sole, and you really need that so it doesn't damage the floor. Another good thing is it's a good way to make friends. You can really meet someone really nice, and this is especially... If, if, if you don't have many friends, you really can meet people through this. It's naturally an event where people will connect. It's also a good way to date, especially for older people. If you're my age, maybe not as much. But if you're older, it's really a good opportunity to meet your potential partner. And I actually did meet my girlfriend. I've only had one, but I met her through ballroom dance. Another good thing is, it's a very formal thing. You may not like dressing up, but if you do like dressing up, if you do like more formality, ballroom dance is, I think, the most formal sport on the planet. It has often events that are white tie and more higher levels, and you can still wear black and white tie at several events without standing out too much, especially great Gatsby parties or special balls. So really, you often may be able to dance in formal ways. It is a full body workout. When you ballroom dance, you exercise. You use your legs to move around and you use your arm to hold your partner up. Now, I lead as a male, so I can't say exactly how everything works for women in ballroom dance, but I know it is a full body workout for men. You are really pushing yourself, especially when you're doing waltz, when you're doing rise and fall. There is a lot of exercise that goes into ballroom dance. Another good thing is, and when you really put this together, it's a workout where you can socialize. When you go to the gym, when you go to most workout activities, you really aren't talking with people. But while you're dancing, you get the opportunity to get to know someone, to talk to someone. And if you aren't really engaged, or really, if, if working out just doesn't get your juices flowing in the brain, this is a good option for you. It's non-competitive, and that's something really nice. Now, I can't speak for competitive dancing, but the standard social dancing is not at all competitive. It's not a sport, so really you're just trying to have fun. And it's one of the only sports, when you really think about it, that's like that. Because every other sport, you're trying to have a winner, you're trying to beat another team. There really are no winners in ballroom dance, again, outside of competitive dancing. Now, it's fun 
as a party. You really get to meet people, you really get to have some fun, there's some drinking there. Again, it's older people, but you really get to meet some interesting and fun older people. Now, one thing is that this is a useful skill if you're at an event, if you're at a wedding, if you're at a ball, you will be able to know, okay, well, I can do a bit of ballroom dance, and if you have some of those skills, you'll actually be able to put yourself quite a bit ahead of everyone else if you've even spent just a few months learning how to ballroom dance. If you've learned how to swing, you'll do really well at any of these events where dancing may be involved. Now, I'm no expert in attracting women. I'm obviously not a magnet for women, but ballroom dance, knowing how to ballroom dance, can help you attract women. It is a good skill for, when women look at men, they might see things, and they'll see things like ballroom dancing as a more attractive trait. It's a bit more of a romanticized sport, so if you're looking to attract women, having that skill might be good. Now, it's a popular sport. You may not hear about it too often, but if you go to dance halls, especially in more populated cities, like where I live, Denver, you are going to find a good deal of people. You will find that it's really not hard to connect with people on this interest. Now, these two are kind of, next two are kind of together. It helps attract a bit of a wealthier clientele. So if you're looking to meet up with some wealthy people if that's really important for your business, although I stand by, I don't think gentlemen should push their business on anyone outside of business hours, but I do think that if you are looking to meet people who you may make a connection with, then this is a good opportunity because ballroom dance does have a wealthier clientele, and it is good for business. You get to meet people, and you never know when you can make a connection. Now, one thing, good thing about ballroom dance is that it helps with posture and balance and a lot of things like this, especially if you walk duck-footed. I walk duck-footed, I still do, but ballroom dance has helped me correct that to some degree, and it's helped me with my posture. Now, one of the good things about ballroom dance is that it attracts a more fun crowd, a bit less serious group of people. You'll see a bit less of this... Uh, Really, it, like, it, there is no ballroom dance equivalent of the football coach who's going, you know, you just gotta win, you gotta push, push. You really don't see that kind of thing in ballroom dance. I'm not saying it's not out there, but it, it's really not anything I've ever encountered. Now, you do get the opportunity, especially with showcases, to perform in front of a crowd. So if that's something that's really important to you, if you seek validation for your skills, you can find that in showcases. And lastly, there is a very low injury risk in ballroom dance. Yes, things happen once in a while, just like in everything, but I've never so much as sprained an ankle in ballroom dance. The worst that's happened to me in five years is that I've gotten a bit sore. Unfortunately, there are cons to ballroom dance. One thing is that it's a bit of an older crowd, so if you're younger like I am, you may struggle to really connect with all of the people there. Although, if you're younger like me and you like being around older people, that may be perfect for you. Another issue is that starting out can be quite intimidating. You'll see a lot of dancers doing Viennese waltz and very advanced dance moves that you really may not feel comfortable even being around. Another thing is that more advanced dancers can push you past your limits. You may find advanced dancers kind of forcing you into moves that you really aren't ready for or comfortable with. Maybe they think it's fun, but really it's best that you tell them up front that you don't want that. Hopefully they'll listen. People can be uncomfortable to dance with, especially as a follower. If they don't have good posture, if they aren't really a good leader, it can make for a very uncomfortable time, unfortunately. You have to be good with rhythm, and that's not really something that can be taught by teachers. You dance to the rhythm of the song, so your feet move along with the rhythm, and it moves along with the beat. You need to be able to hear in the song where the rhythm and the beat is, and if that doesn't come naturally for you, it might be a difficult thing to learn. There are a lot of novices in ballroom dance. You'll find probably nine novices to every one more advanced dancer. Because of that, the more advanced dancers can congregate together at social events because they want to be doing more advanced dance moves and they really want to be pushing their limits. So really, that can be a downside for both novices and more advanced dancers. You're really going to struggle to find a good amount 
of advanced answers. Novices may actually try to push you more than you're capable of. They might try to think it's they may think it's fun to try and push you into making them do moves that really they aren't ready for, or even dances like Viennese waltz or a regular waltz that they really aren't prepared for, and they may not take no for an answer very well if you try to put it lightly. It is not the best muscle builder. If you're looking for something that's going to get you really ripped or really muscular, it's probably best to look elsewhere. Ballroom dance can get you athletic, it can get you fit, but you have to do a lot of it, so it should not be a substitute for a workout routine, especially if you're wanting to really get fit. Now, there can be a bit of snobbery in ballroom dance, especially among studios. It's an issue that you can encounter from time to time, and studios may even try to push products and services on you more than you're comfortable with. That's actually why I left my studio that I was at for probably four years, and it was a popular studio, but I was just being pushed with these products and these events, and I just wasn't comfortable with it. It is hard to succeed on group lessons because in ballroom dance you're doing very specific things with your body and it's not really something that you can just adapt to unless you have a very specific lesson on it. So really it's probably best if you take private lessons if you really want to be a good dancer and that can cost about double a group lesson. There can be a bit of weirder people in ballroom dance. This isn't necessarily something that innately attracts weird people, but you'll definitely find them from time to time. Um, I had a very odd experience at one point with a woman who was telling me to swing my hips in a sexy way and to dance romantically, and she was above the age of 60, and I think I was underage at, the po at that point, so it's that you can have some oddballs from time to time. A bad thing is illness can spread in ballroom dance. Right now we're on the tail end of COVID, and even if, you're, even if this video is coming out at a time where COVID is not still prevalent, if you're seeing it at that point, you can still get sick from these big events where people are dancing with each other, real close to each other. So if you're sensitive to sickness or disease, if you're in any sort of high risk category for that, you should steer there's not always a good DJ, and certain dances can be played more than others. You might have some bad music, but you might also have a lot of dances that you really don't like all that much, and they're not really proportionate. For me, I like waltz, I like tango, I like foxtrot, I like Viennese waltz. These are the dances I love. But when I go to, I'm not going to name names, but a dance hall, and I do like going to it for the social aspect, but there is often an issue where they'll play Jitterbug and Nightclub Two-Step and a lot of these dances that really aren't standard, and they'll just keep playing them, and there will only be a few dances that are of the more formal variety throughout the night. There can be an odd sexual element to some dancers. Um, as I mentioned before in that story with the woman who was kind of almost felt like she was making a move on me, you can really have some very odd sexual encounters with people. Nothing really extreme, but these are some Latin dances that are very romantic and kind of sexual in their movement, so you might attract some people who are innately more sexual and might not have the social awareness to keep that out of the way. In conclusion, then, Ballroom dance is a very fun hobby. It can have pros, it can definitely have cons, but overall it is one of the more fun things you can get into if you're looking for a relaxed, non-competitive, and socially positive sort of sport. Before I go, I wanted to show you, these are my dance shoes. You do need a pair, not necessarily like these of course, these I actually specially made for ballroom dance. They have suede soles on the bottom. And this is pretty much the only equipment you need to dance. I would generally recommend getting a sort of black leather shoe, as that will be the most versatile. Although if you plan on dancing in evening formal wear a lot, I might recommend a pair of patent leather shoes. I would recommend dressing based on how formal you will be dancing with. That might happen somewhat regularly. For me, I dance sometimes in white tie, so these opera pumps are perfect for me. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.